Today's topic is witches get stitches. What do I mean by that? Okay, in prison, you know, you all know I did prison time. When I was in prison, if you were a snitch and you ratted on people, we said, well, snitches get stitches. Snitches get stitches. Well, now that I'm out of prison, redeemed, <laughs> walking the right path, now, especially this time of year, Halloween, when I see so many believers being cursed with disease and disorders from witches and witchcraft covens, now the phrase is witches get stitches, all right? Because I've seen so many cancer victims, people that have died, people that have been afflicted, uh, marriages ripped apart, families uh, invaded, uh, all kinds of pain and disorders put on people through these witchcraft curses. <clears throat> Look, next week, Monday, is Halloween. And this is the high holy time for witches, sorcerers, wizards, witchcraft covens. What they're doing is just like we have our high holy times, right? Easter, Pentecost, the, the Jewish uh, feasts that people, a, a lot of people celebrate. I do, I do, I celebrate them. Those are our high holy times to celebrate God, to celebrate Christ and what he's done, what he's accomplished on the cross and what he's accomplished through his victory at the resurrection. Those are our high holy times of the year. Well, this is theirs. And right now, for the past weeks, witches have been bringing and warlocks and sorcerers have been bringing their blood sacrifices. Yeah, I said it. Blood sacrifices and all kinds of other sacrifices in worship to Satan to their altars to strengthen their altars. For what purpose? For the purpose of destroying you and me. See, we're, we are their competition in this earth. Yeah, you heard it. We are their competition in this earth. Psalm 8 says God has given us, earthborn man, dominion over all the works of his hands. Okay, we're the ones that legally, jurisdictionally have the right to take control of this planet and to manage and govern the earth. A lot of us aren't doing that. We need to get to that place. But the witches and the warlocks and the sorcerers, they all know that that authority has been given to us. So they want it. They're jealous. They're jealous. Okay. And they want that authority. So how, how can they possibly take it? They have to take it illegally by assaulting us, throwing curses at us, putting us, throwing us under the bus, causing us to be completely destroyed and weakened so that the body of Christ dwindles down in its authority and power. And then they can take authority and power. We can't let that happen. We have to learn what is it that allows these witchcraft curses to land? Because the Bible says, remember, the Bible says the causeless curse cannot alight. That means that a curse from witchcraft or even from a Christian who's operating in witchcraft or even from ourselves when we start cursing ourselves by saying stuff like, oh, I'm no good, I I'm weak, I I'm useless, you know, I, I just want to die. When we start cursing ourselves with our own words, it those things cannot land unless there's a cause. Now, if you're cursing yourself, you just gave it a cause, all right? But we have to find out what are the causes, what are the landing strips that allows witchcraft curses to take us out? Because that's what they do. They take us out. We're going to look at that today. So these witches can get some stitches. Everybody chat it. Witches get stitches. Amen. Witches get stitches. All right. So let's look at it. First of all, everything we're going to do today is going to be done in the court of heaven. We've been praying and believing God's doing it right now. Why? How so? I hope you guys all have enough knowledge about the courts of heaven by now. I hope you've been watching me, been watching, you know, like Robert Henderson, people like that. I've had Robert on the show many times <clears throat> because the courts of heaven are a very powerful place to take all of our petitions before the Lord so we can file legal, legal motions against these demonic spirits. Now I'm going to read you a scripture. You've all heard it before. It's Luke 10, 19. It says this, I'm going to put a new reality on it, new revelation so you understand it. It says this, behold, I, this is Jesus speaking. Behold, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any means harm you. Okay, so Jesus has given us authority over what? Serpents, scorpions, and I'm going to tie those to witches in a minute. And over all 
A-L-L, all meaning all, okay? All the power of the enemy, so that nothing shall by in any means hurt you. Now, believe it or not, this is a courtroom, this is a courtroom scripture. How so? That word authority there is the Greek word exosia. Exosia. Guess what one of the meanings is? Ready? The power of judicial decisions. You see, the authority Christ has given us is judicial, guys. It is judicial. When a judicial decree is released from a court, by law, everyone has to obey it. Everyone. The perpetrators, the defendants, the, 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 the people that are coming in and, and filing the claim, everyone has to obey it. There's no ifs, ands, or, uts, or, or buts about it, especially a court that releases a decree that's called the court of heaven, which is the superior supreme court over every single court in the universe, amen? So again, we've been given authority. It means the power of judicial decisions against what? Serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any means harm you. You know what the word harm there means? Get ready? It means a criminal who has broken the law in some way. See, these witches, these, these sorcerers, these wizards, these serpents and scorpions have broken the law. They're putting curses on us. How does that make them a lawbreaker? Jesus already became a curse for us, guys. Jesus already became a curse for us. He took the curse on our behalf. Amen? That's what makes them a lawbreaker. That's what makes them a criminal. Amen? But here's the thing. Often these serpents, scorpions, witches, they go into the court and they accuse us. You know that there's courtrooms in the second heaven? That's right. They, they, <laughs> ooh, they've made their own courts. I've seen them. I have seen them on my way up to the third heaven. I looked over and seen all the courts in the second heaven where they're releasing what, what Isaiah 10 says, unrighteous decrees against us, unrighteous decrees. So they're releasing that. And in those courts, they're saying, we're a criminal that has broken the law in some way. How so? Oh, we've gotten bitter. We've gotten offended. Uh, we've cheated somebody. Uh, we've committed adultery. We've been drinking. We've been popping those pills. We've been doing this and this. And they make a list. They make a list. Good thing Christ, when he died, he became the righteous for the unrighteous and the just for the unjust. That's why it says no weapon formed against you will prosper and every tongue will be silenced because this is the heritage of the righteous and our righteousness is from the Lord. Amen. But they will accuse us as long as, and as long as we don't go into court to stop it, it's going to keep happening. Okay. It's going to keep happening. So we're going to take these witches and the serpents to court today as we get healed of the landing strips, as I show you what those landing strips are. Now, when I say witches and serpents, I mean that. Listen to me very carefully. Nobody's teaching this. Witches curse, serpents carry out the curse. They're the muscle. I understand this precept about them being the muscle, okay? Because I used to be the muscle. People would uh, send me out on collections and I would go and go get money that somebody owed for the person that hired me. I was the muscle, I was the enforcer. That's what a serpent is. He enforces the witchcraft curse. Now, do I have proof of that? Yes, of course, I wouldn't teach it if I didn't. Leviticus 20, 27, this is in the Darby translation, Darby translation, and it says this, if there be a man or a woman in whom is the spirit of Python or of divination, they will certainly be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones and their blood is upon them. You see that it connects Python with the spirit of divination, which, okay, here we go. Ready? Hmm. Guys, witches and serpents always work together. Always, always. Remember the woman with the spirit of divination that was following Paul around saying, these men are showing you the way to the most high God. Remember that? It says that she won for her masters much gains. Okay, it says she had a spirit of divination. Look up that word divination in the Greek in that passage in Acts 16. That word divination has a one word meaning and it means it's ready python. That's right. It was a snake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was a snake that was talking to Paul. In fact, that serpent was in charge of getting her masters much gains. You wonder why you don't have all your finances in order because there's a python squeezing out your gains. The python gets illegal gains for, for the sinner, 
for the pagan and he squeezes out the gains because that's what pythons do. They squeeze the life out of stuff. He squeezes out your gains in, in your finances. But again, it always works together with a witch, with a warlock, with a, with a sorcerer. Because that word divination there, it's divination, that's witchcraft. But it also means python. Amen, python. Now remember, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? He said, I've given you authority, the power of judicial decisions, to trample on serpents and scorpions and after all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any wise harm you. You get that? We have the legal authority to bring these demons, these witches, with their illegal curses, because Jesus has already become a curse for us, and these serpents that are enforcing the curse and carrying it out into court for judgment. Now we just must throw ourselves on the mercy of the court and get rid of everything we have in common with them. So let's look at that. What do we have in common with these witches that are allowing the curse to alight? Remember, the causeless curse is not alight. What do we have? Okay, number one is bitterness, guys. Do you remember when Peter ran into this guy named Simon the Sorcerer? The, the scriptures talk about this guy in Acts 8, right? Like this guy they said it was the great wonder. He, he used to astonish people with all his magic tricks and all of the things that he would do, okay? So they thought, you know, all the people thought this guy was a big deal. And this guy thought he was a big deal too, okay? But he got, he, he started following the disciples and he got baptized in the Lord, and then pretty soon, he's hanging out with, with Peter and John, and it says that they began to put their hands on and, and tell and command people to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Well, when he saw this, he says this, he says this, wow. Uh, when Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles that the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. What a witchcraft prayer that is, amen. Saying, give me also this power that on whomever I lay my hands that he might receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said to him, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God, the Holy Ghost is a free gift, everybody, free gift, may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of thy wickedness and pray. If God of the thought of this heart that in your heart may be forgiven thee, and then he says this, for I see, Simon, that you are in the gall of bitterness and in a bond forged by iniquity to fetter souls. See the, oh gosh, which is fetter your soul? Bind your soul through what? Bitterness. Bitterness is a landing strip for witchcraft. Simon the sorcerer received a rebuke and a judgment from Peter because he had what? A, a goal of bitterness in his heart. Look, I've met me a lot of witches. And if you're online right now and you're a witch, you need to repent. You probably are a witch because something extremely traumatic has happened to you and you become extremely bitter about it. But Jesus is here to heal you today. Amen. But guys, listen to me. This is a landing strip. So many witches, I've seen that they become witches because they're bitter. They got traumatized. They got wounded. They got abused. They got molested. They, they've been shunned. They've been, they've been uh, rejected. And it causes them to get wounded and it causes them to get bitter and they turn to witchcraft. Okay? If you have bitterness in your heart, it can cause you to have a landing strip for this demonic curse to land. The causeless curse cannot alight. The curse will be able to alight if you've got bitterness in your heart. Did you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? We go after witches and witchcraft and we start rebuking, I bind every Jezebel spirit in the name of Jesus. But man, then we get our butt kicked and we wonder why. Because we've got a legal landing strip of bitterness in our heart. Now I want you to chat in right now. I want everybody to start chatting. And say, are you bitter about something? Is there something that's happened to you? Has somebody done something to you? Is, is, is there been a situation that has been so extreme, it's been so hardcore that you just got bitter about it? Have you been unable to forgive somebody and you've gotten so angry and offended that you're literally bitter? Remember it says a, a bitter root will defile and trouble many. 
Defile, you know that word trouble there means? That's in Hebrews 12. Defile and trouble many. You know what that word trouble means? To be harassed and molested by demons. A bitter root allows demonic activity, guys, including these witches. So let me chat. Let me see the chat right now. Thanks, guys. People, uh, Molly says, Lord, remove any bitterness, known and unknown. In Jesus' name. Stephanie, I won't read it out loud. Yet people are starting to chat in. Yes, yes, working on forgiveness. People are working on forgiveness. Um, right now, people are already saying they, they, they uh, repent of bitterness. That's great, guys. Put the fire of God on you. Put the blood of Jesus on that record. People are saying, remove bitterness from me. Forgiveness. Uh, forgiving myself has been a struggle. I got, wow, right? You can almost get bitter about the, the, the stuff you feel about your own self. How bad you feel about your own self. Remember, there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. Amen? None. Somebody's saying, Alana's saying, I don't want this bitterness anymore. Somebody said, I repent of bitterness. God, remove the root. Somebody said, wounded in battle with limes. Yeah, some of you may be sick. Thanks, Wendy, for sharing that. From uh, you having a, a battle with a disease, and it's just gone on and on and on and on. I'm going to show you something about that in a minute, about how the enemy actually elongates these attacks and keeps on pressing them on you so that they can keep you in a place of being bitter and, and wounded just from the, uh, the, the length and the fierceness of the battle. Amen? Wow. Migraines, see that, people? Yeah. See, we, the witches are taking, oh my gosh, taking advantage of what has happened to us in our life. All right, I want us to start praying right now. Okay, right where you're at, just, just either pray in your, the Holy Ghost or, or just start thanking Jesus because we're going to activate right now. I want you to share this broadcast, please. There are people out there right now, they're wondering why their life has gone crazy town. And, and, and if that's you too, have you noticed that your life has gone completely crazy town in the last month? It's because the altars, the witches are sacrificing on their altars so that their altars gain power to, be, to put a swirl on our existence. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you right now as you lead us into this time of healing. Father, I thank you, Jesus. I wish we had some background music. Ryan, I don't know if we have it, but you can find, a, find out for me. Okay. Father, I thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Pray in the spirit, guys, if you can. People might be harassing you right now, unduly right now, and you think, my God, what's, what's going on? This person doesn't quit. They're probably operating in a witchcraft spirit, guys. And you can't have anything in common with them. And then that's when you're going to win the battle. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Yes. Come on, pray with me. Don't just sit there and listen to me. We thank you, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. We thank you for your presence. Oh, come with your glory, Lord. Into this broadcast to help people get healed and delivered, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. You're healing our souls of all bitterness right now. We repent for bitterness. Start repenting, guys. Start saying, Father, forgive me for my bitterness. Heal me of my bitterness. I forgive that person even if they don't deserve it. I forgive them. Help me to have no bitterness in my heart towards them, Lord. Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your blood. It wipes out the record of accusations in the court of our bitterness. Lord, start repenting, guys, where you're at for your words. Have you been speaking gossip about that person that you're bitter at? Have you been talking about them, texting people about them? You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I also like to say out of the abundance of the heart, the thumbs text, okay? We start texting our peeps to tell them what this person did and that person did and on and on and on. If that's you, just say, uh, uh, you know, I bind my, my, my texts. I cleanse my texts with the blood. Cleanse your texting with the blood. Ask God to forgive you. 
right now as we're on this broadcast right now. Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood, washing everyone clean of bitterness, <clears throat> pulling out that bitter root right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, we repent right now for all that bitter talk, bitter feelings right now in Jesus' name. In fact, pray with me right now, guys, to say, Lord Jesus, I'm being assailed by witchcraft, so I'm taking it to court. I throw myself on the mercy of this court because mercy and mercy triumphs over judgment. And where sin increases and abounds, grace increases the more and super abounds. I hope you're praying with me. Say, Lord God, I repent for bitterness. I repent for getting bitter, staying bitter, talking about that person to everyone, talking about that situation to everyone. I repent for texting people about that situation and keeping the fire of bitterness going. Just say, Lord God, heal me now in Jesus' name. Wash me clean with your blood in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, right now, right now. Thank you, Lord, right now. Okay, now I want you to put out your hands and I'm going to pray for you. Father, in Jesus, put out your hands. Don't even pray. Just receive right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I release the Holy Spirit, the blood of Christ to erase the accusations that are in the court of heaven against this person, against everybody watching right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release the blood to cleanse our conscience of dead works in the name of Jesus. And I release fire, fire to burn up everything in the soul realm that's in common with these witches and their curses so that the causeless curse cannot land. Father, in Jesus' name right now, I decree it. I decree it right now for everyone watching. The Holy Spirit is coming right now to cleanse them and fill them with fire and power, light, dunamis in Jesus' name now. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus, now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody says they're yawning and they have tears. A lot of you are going to start to get deliverance right now. You're going to start to get deliverance right now. We're going to go into this next section. I'm going to tell you the next key to defeating bitterness, and that is to not, to get healed of trauma, to get healed of trauma. Look, I love this story. I use it a lot. I can't stop. It's so good. It has so many facets to it. I'm going to use it right now. Job was traumatized. Okay, he had all his, his flocks and herds stolen. All his servants were completely uh, killed. His children gathered together in one house, a whirlwind that Satan created, knocks the house down, takes them all out. Can you imagine that happening to you? This is a super max trauma, one after the other, right? And then in chapter two, Satan strikes his body, covers his body from head to toe. Everybody's suffering from a sickness. Wow, that's not God doing that to you. That's the enemy doing that to you, amen? That is a lot of trauma. And then what happens? All that trauma happens in chapter one of Job, then in chapter two of Job, and then chapter three of Job, Job speaks the entire chapter. He talks about how bitter he is from all the trauma he went through. He was so bitter by the trauma, he even cursed his own birthday. Listen to it. It says, I'll just skim. It says, after this, Job opened his mouth and cursed his birthday. He said, let that day perish, which I was born. And the night which was announced, let there a man child be conceived. Let that night be solitary and barren. Let no joyful voice come from it. Why was I not still born? Why did I not Give up the ghost and die when my mother bore me. Why was I not miscarried and hidden away as an infant who never saw the light? Look, what is he saying? He's like, wow, I am so traumatized. And I become so upset and hurt from the trauma. I wish I was never even born. Okay, and then he goes on to say this. Listen, this is verse 3. This is Job 3.20. Why is light of life given to him who is in misery and life to the bitter in soul? See, guys, trauma and bitterness hand in hand, hand in hand. Sometimes the enemy, look, look, listen to me. The enemy will cause one storm after the other, after the other, after the other to come upon you, to get you so traumatized that you finally become bitter about it. And then you have like Simon the sorcerer and an iniquity of bitterness, a gall of bitterness in your heart. And there's a landing strip. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Wow. Now, check this out. It goes on. And Job says this. 
verse 8, 3, 8. Let those who are, let those who curse, curse that day. Those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Do you hear that? He's so bitter from all the trauma, 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 trauma that he'd been through. He's literally saying, let those who curse, who's those that curse? Witches, warlocks, sorcerers. Let those who curse, curse that day, meaning his birthday. Let those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Remember I told you, oh man, I told you that witches and serpents work together. Leviathan is called that twisting fleeing serpent in Isaiah 27. Basically, in his ancient wisdom, Job understood something very important, okay? That witches curse, but they also are skilled in handling. They're like handlers. They're like snake handlers. They're skilled in rousing up Leviathan. They have authority to loose and rouse up Leviathan against you to carry out the curse they, they just put on you. But... That curse cannot land if you don't let all the trauma get you bitter. You get healed of the trauma and you don't let yourself get bitter. Does everybody catch what I'm throwing down here? Do you see what I'm saying to you here? Even Job understood that dynamic. Whoa, whoa. How many people have been under major trauma? Chat in right now. If you have been under like a massive season of warfare, like one thing after another. And let me tell you again, guys, don't even think the enemy did not create that warfare to wipe you out. The enemy causes one storm after the other storm, after the other storm, after the other storm, after the other storm, because he knows, ah, you're a really good Christian. You fast, you pray, you worship. You probably get over the first storm and even the second, probably the third and the fourth. But on the fifth and the sixth one, and the seventh one, you're finally going to break weak and get so bitter about it that you're going to be like, I give up, I'm done. The enemy creates those storms. Look, Satan created those storms against Job. He created the whirlwind that took out his kids. He sent somebody, he, he roused up the enemies to go steal Job's, uh, all his flocks and herds, all his wealth, and kill all his servants. He touched Job's body and afflicted Job, okay? He's going to make one you got to remember the source. Guys, remember when you're going through warfare, one of the ways to keep yourself from getting bitter about the trauma is to remember the source. The devil is creating one storm after another storm after another storm to get you wounded from the trauma and bitter enough to want to give up and even curse yourself. Job cursed himself. Let those who curse, curse that day. Those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. All right, let's, let's, start, let's start getting healed right now. Just start thanking the Lord and, and praying in, in your spiritual language. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we have been under massive warfare. The enemy has illegally created warfare against us. Layers of warfare, seasons, long gated seasons of warfare, Lord. We take into court right now because we know when we get healed, we can, we've caught the thief in the act, in the strategy he's had against us to try to wound us with the incessant beating of these traumatic incidences so that we'll get bitter and even want to die and even curse ourselves. And those things have allowed the witch's curses to land. Lord God, right now, we receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, right now, in Jesus' name, flood us, fill us right now, saturate us, strengthen us and reinforce us with mighty dunamis power by your activity inside our soul, Holy Spirit. Heal our mind of those memories. Heal our emotions of our outbursts and our depressions and our anxieties, Lord. Right now, Holy Spirit, put your divine activity of the power. We receive Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit and power. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, release your power right now, Holy Spirit, to everyone watching, to everybody online right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now, right now, to go after trauma. I speak to every root of trauma. I speak to every wound of trauma right now. 
and everyone that's watching in the name of Jesus. Guys, put your hand on your heart and your stomach to, to prophetically show the activity of the Holy Spirit right now. I speak to that trauma right now. I curse every root and tree of trauma in you, in your mind, will, and, and your emotions right now. I curse it and cast that, that tree, that mountain into the sea. I speak to it right now. I break the cycle of trauma. I break the cycle of warfare. I break the cycle of assault against you. I release healing into the deepest parts of your body and your soul right now where the trauma is in the name of Jesus. I release healing right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, as an officer in the court, I, I go into, let me do this, guys, please. Let me do it. Just agree with me in prayer. Father, Job 41 says we're not supposed to lay our hand on Leviathan. If we do so, we will remember the battle and never do such a foolish thing again. So I won't lay my hand on him, but the court will. Because the Bible says Jesus has given us authority, exosia power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy so nothing can in any wise harm us. Father, I ask that this mighty court would subpoena Leviathan into its presence and that this court would restrain his activity and that this court would punish him as according to Isaiah 27 with God's strong and unrelenting sword will punish Leviathan, that twisting, fleeing serpent in the sea. Father... I thank you that this court will not allow him to twist, to twist opportunities, to twist revelation, to twist conversation between people, to put disease and disorder on people's bodies, including cancer. Why did I say that? Because remember, in Job 3, Job says stuff like, curse my mother's breast, curse her womb. I wish that was miscarriage. Let those who curse, curse that day, those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Many people are suffering cancer of the womb and from the breast in their bodies because of the serpent. Never rebuke him, only take him to court. We do so now, right now. Right now, Lord, right now. We command trauma to be healed. The trauma that the serpent is using, this witchcraft spirit is using to curse. And then the court to arrest the enforcer of that curse, Leviathan, and stop him. You know that Isaiah 27, guys, says he's the piercing serpent. That word piercing means a fugitive. Why would Leviathan be a fugitive? Because he's carrying out the witchcraft curse on you, but Jesus has already became a curse for you. That's what makes Leviathan a fugitive. Now, say it with me. Ready? Say, Lord God, I step into the court of heaven to receive healing for my soul of all the trauma I've been through. Holy Spirit, saturate me now. Holy Spirit, fill me with power in every place I've been wounded from the warfare. Holy Spirit, I release you to inundate and flood my mind, will, and emotions and my physical body to heal me of every memory, of every crisis, of every stressor, of every horrible situation, of every warfare, of every battle, and of every trauma. Holy Spirit, I receive your ministry now, in the name of Jesus now, 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 now. Keep praying with me, saying, Lord, I go into court, and I agree with Katie's motion that this court would arrest Leviathan, restrain him, Remove him from my life and imprison him. And Lord God, we decree that every witchcraft curse that has been loosed against me is illegal because Jesus already became a curse for me. That is my testimony in this court. Remember, guys, we overcome the enemy by the blood and by our testimony. Amen. Now just start thanking God. Father, we thank you for that. 
We thank you. Breaking every curse. I command every curse to be broken now. I speak to every curse that's on you right now. Every witchcraft curse that has tried to land on you because of bitterness or trauma. And I break it now. I say you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed now, now, now. And I break that curse by the mighty name of Jesus Christ who already became a curse for you. I break it right now in the name of Jesus now, 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 now. Now, now, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Sha, sha. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All right, guys, we only have 11 minutes left. Let's check in. How's everybody feeling? How's it going? Tell me if you feel heat, energy, Watery eyes, yawning, burping, tired, uh, you know, presence of the Holy Spirit. Let me see your chat right now as we keep on going. Somebody said relieved. Praise the Lord. Relieved. Somebody says, I felt the power. I felt light. Felt something break. I felt wind. I'm just reading off the chats right now. I felt heat. Thank you, Lord. Tired. Okay. A lot of times deliverance causes you to be feel exhausted. Electric energy down the legs, light shining over me, down my legs. Right now, yawning. I felt heat, peacefulness. I feel tired too. That's the deliverance can leave you feeling exhausted, amen. Heat on the body took a deep breath of relief. I feel strength. I feel the Holy Spirit. Uh, def something definitely broke. I'm just continuing to read through the chats. I felt a cool wind around me. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. I feel free. Uh, I'm just reading through. Keep on chatting. Wife says she felt it lift off of her. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I felt, um, what is this? I felt clean current running through my chest. Uh, healed of inflammation. Uh, Katie, I watch, love, love watching your lives. Amen. Uh, heat. A uh, heartbeat in my heart, exhausted, yawning, tired, but lower back pain, gone, weeping, and then palms of the hands, sweating, burping, yawning, tired, watery eyes, feeling the Holy Spirit, body shaking all over. I seen fire. I, I felt heat and fire, all stress being released from my tissues. I felt drowsy. Thank you, Lord. See, it's working. Felt healing in my lower body and my stomach. It's working. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now, we only have nine minutes left. We're going to talk about the last thing. And I'm going to do a series on this. How many of you would like me to do a series on this? Do you think it would help you? I got in late. I started laughing. Deep breaths of relief. Power energy in my shoulders. I feel peaceful. I'm just going through these wonderful chats. Wonderful. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you. Share the broadcast. Even if people uh, have to watch it later, they're still going to get healed and delivered. Amen? Somebody said, felt warmth and uh, water in my eyes. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, yes, yes, on the teaching. Okay, now here we go. This is one of the other thing that people don't realize. Idolatry, guys, eight minutes left. Idolatry in your life is a legal landing strip for witchcraft and these serpents. Okay, do you remember in Acts 16, the woman with the spirit of divination, we talked about her, the word divination, she's a witch, divination, right? But the word divination means python. They always work together, witches and snakes, witches and snakes, Ugh. witches get stitches, snakes get your head cut off. They always work together. Now in that region where Paul was at at that time, they actually worshiped the serpent. It was an idol. It was an idol. You know that the bronze serpent that they made in the desert? Oh man, I could teach on that for another two days. That became an idol to the Israelites. Hello. It represented Christ on the cross, being lifted up on the cross for the whole world to see. Amen? But snakes, idolatry, idols in your life allow witches to assault you. Now listen to this. Nobody, nobody picks this up. I don't know why. Jezebel didn't have power in herself. She got her power from what? The idols that she worshipped, guys. The idols that she worshipped, she worshipped Baal, she, wor she worshipped Ashereth. She got her power from the idols she worshipped. People go after Jezebel. I rebuke Jezebel, I bind Jezebel. Then they get their butt kicked. Why? Because they got a bunch of idolatry in their life. 
They've made, they've made people into idols. They've made money into idols. They, they've made uh, themselves into idols. They've made their kids into idols. They've made their ministry into an idol. They've made clothes, shoes into an idol, their husbands, their spouses into an idol. When you have idolatry in your life, it's going to allow witchcraft to, the causeless curse, the causeless curse cannot alight. Okay? That gives it a cause. That gives a, the curse a cause to alight in your life and then the serpent the right to carry it out. I want you to chat in. What are your idols? I know this is, you know me. I just ask you to lay it all out on the table. Amen. What are the idols in your life, guys? We only have six minutes left. I need you to chat really fast. Have you made food an idol? You know, Jezebel got a, a judgment for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it. It says this, uh, Revelations 2.20. 2, I have this against you that you tolerated that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess, claiming to be inspired and who is teaching and leading astray my servants and beguiling them into practicing sexual vice and eating food sacrificed to idols. If you got a food problem right now, it's probably witchcraft is driving, is one of the driving spirits behind it. Because you know what happens? We get traumatized, we get bitter through the trauma, and then we use food to comfort the pain in our souls from all the junk we've been through, guys. Did you hear what I said? Wow. And that means when we make that food into an idol, Jezebel, she taught, what did she teach people? How to eat food sacrificed to idols. You've just created a landing strip for the curse to alight. Wow. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's look and see what people are saying or some idols that they're dealing with. Because I know I've had mine. And I know you guys are having yours too. Let's see. Ooh, food, coffee, making pain an idol. Wow, I never thought of that. That's really good, Lori. Thanks for sharing that. Motorcycle, since I was 10 years old. Oh, I'm close behind you, uh, Mooney, on that one for sure. Okay. Uh, food, smoking. Oh, I lost it. Uh-oh, I lost the chat. I give you full permission to come out here, Ryan. <laughs> and help me get back to the chat. Yeah, come out there and fix it. Thank you. Guys, if you, if I lost you, wait, Ryan's, Hi. <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. We're in a new studio, guys. Things are like, like different. See, I went to this. Oh. I want to see people's answers. Okay, I'm going to te keep teaching why Ryan, you, you do it while I do it. Okay. Okay, so look, as you chat in with your idols are, remember, this is a landing strip, guys. This is a landing strip for you. So we need to repent of idols. We've only got three minutes left. Follow my prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I have idols in my life and they're allowing witchcraft to assault me and, and serpents to carry out those curses that the witches are releasing. Father, I need healing. Say, I ask that this court would cover my sins of idolatry with the blood of Jesus and release wave after wave after wave after wave of power to heal my soul of my addictions to idols and break me free from relying on idols to heal and comfort the pain in my soul. You praying with me? Say, Lord God, I sever myself from these idols. Say, Lord God, I judge every altar of idolatry in my soul, in my life, and in my bloodline now in the name of Jesus. Okay, now just put your hands up. Father, I decree you're doing a, a miraculous work by your mercy and your grace. We're not going to have to pray forever on this one. I ask that you completely zap everybody with the presence of your Holy Spirit, with fire, with light, with glory, with doom as power, and completely remove the addictions and destroy the altars. I speak a holy judgment from this court, and I say altar, altar of idolatry in everyone's life right now. I command you to break apart, pour out ashes, and become non-effective in every single person's life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, you're doing it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Woo! Mother. Okay, guys. Now, I want to pray for the sick. Lord God, now I judge the, the demonic activity of sickness in people's bodies right now. Now that we've broken these altars and we put a judgment on these demonic spirits, I cast them out by the power of the court decree and the name of Jesus now. Leviathan, you're being evicted by the court and every other serpent and every other witchcraft curse. I break you and I command you come out, out now in the name of Jesus now. Now, 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 now. In Jesus' name, now. And I decree you are free and I release creative power to heal. I command growths and tumors disappear. I command the spirit of pain to go. I judge the spirit of torment and I cast him out. I command your body to regenerate. I speak the light, which is life, the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of life, into your body to regenerate and quicken your mortal body right now in the name of Jesus now. Now, 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 now in Jesus name. And I decree you are free. You are free indeed in Jesus name. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you. Now chat in guys what happened today. Chat in if you feel less pain. Chat in if, if some sort of change happened in your body. And remember, guys, I need those selfies. You gotta get your phone out. You gotta send me a selfie miracle testimony video. Put your phone two minutes of what you had, what the doctor said about it, what kind of pain it gave you, what kind of problems you had with it, and what God did for you when he blessed you, touched you, and healed and delivered you today. Amen? Okay, 14 seconds left. I love every one of you. We're down here in Naples. Pray for us. Please go online to support our prison ministry, katiesusa.com. And I'm going to see you guys next week. Bye-bye.